All right, I am Nicholas Mana, and this is Matchups and How to Proceed Them. This is part of my series, and I'm a new series called I'm Hard Stuck Platt, So You Don't Have To Educational Series. We will be talking about uh, lane pressures, uh, matchups, and how they affect the flow of the game. Number one, we'll, we'll, we'll break it down to three parts. There's, there's, one, there's three parts, one, two, and three, and I'll go into detail about uh, winning lanes versus losing lanes, and then pretty much how how they affect the flow of the game and and, and where you can predict team fights are going to happen or skirmishes are going to happen based on um, pressures that that the lanes exert. And then we're going to talk about how to document a matchup and how to keep track of um, who wins what, uh, how to play the lane and stuff like that. So. Number one, winning lanes versus losing lanes. The difference in how they affect the flow of the game. A winning lane will have more pressure and lane presence slash map presence. So this is a, a game time timer, 30, 3 minutes 30-ish, right? Uh, typical mid lane, uh, if, if, the mid, if the blue side's winning, it's going to look like this. And you can really see and imagine a couple of things that's uh, going to happen. So let's go over the options that we have. Options for winning lanes. Force them to CS on the tower if they can't. The reason why I say if they can't in parentheses is because if if they can CS on the tower and 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 you just keep shoving it, there's nothing that they're they're just safe. They're safe farming on the tower and they're getting every CS and keeping up with you and you're gonna start falling behind because they're probably gonna outscale you. Easier for you to poke, more minions plus higher level. Take Scuttle, Word Enemy Jungle, Slash Word River, Roam, Roam with the Jungler. When not visible to the enemy, forces them to play more reserved. So what, am I, what I mean by this is, let's just say um, I'm blue side and I just, you know, I have enough for my, um, that 100, 1100 1, item that like, gives armor pen. I forgot what it's called. But uh, yeah, you just go back and, back and buy it. But let's say if you go off this way and then you just be in this bush and the laner is just going to gonna farm up farm, farm the rest of the minions and then back they're they're gonna think that you weren't you run bot lane and they're gonna be playing more reserved right they might hide in the tower and miss a few CS like three or four and you, you're just being going back to pay, uh, going back to lane getting an item but they're missing CS maybe XP and that's just pressure on its own and that's 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 important to keep note of uh, to like how you could affect other lanes by just by, by, by just making them think that you're doing something that you're not. And it also reveals that, hey, maybe they don't have the proper vision. Maybe that's why they're playing safe. Because they don't they don't they don't even know you're coming. Like, oh they don't yeah, they don't even see any vision. They don't know where you're gonna come from, they don't know where you're gonna be, they don't know if you're back yet, and that's why they're playing so safe, because you have no words. And, and that tells a whole lot that you could pick up from just that. Options for the losing lane. Get better at last hitting under the tower. Because if you're playing if you mean like Anivia who else? Loses lanes a lot. Uh, Yasuo maybe. Uh, just last hitting in a tower is so important, mainly because if if you're able to keep up, I already talked about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, counter ganks. So when what do I mean by this? I think a counter gank is good for the winning lane. You could counter gank. So when you when you get gank, you get you get a counter gank. It's easy to get a gank. Then do options for winning lanes. So if you get a gank and you kill them, you can probably do any one of these. Let your team know when your laner is missing. Uh, it's important not just ping your lane. Ping the lane where you think they're going. Ping where you think they are. Ping track the movement. It adds so much more. And it gives your uh, teammates so much more information and allows them to play the lane. Uh, more precisely, when you when when your laner leaves lane, I forgot to put laner. I rewrote this, but ah, when your laner leaves lane to ward or roam, you and your jungler can gank them. So let's say I go, I'm gonna go gank top lane, and then you just follow me, and the and the jungler comes in and stops me right here, and then you're behind me, and I'm sandwiched and I die. Right? Those are some pretty cool stuff. Uh, knowing your options and knowing how how. And knowing what you could do and what they could do is really important and it will allow you to play the lanes better well uh, make you see things more clearly just knowing will give you more 
it, it takes less off your mind and you can focus more on other, other things that you need to focus on. Playing around lanes. So this is super important, especially if you're a jungler. Uh, I'll talk more about this image after I talk about the, the, the text. So, uh, so you get a better idea of, of what I'm coming at with this. The flow of lanes will, will dictate where and when people roam. Understanding this will allow you the initiative to make team calls. It's easier for the aggressive team to assemble and force objectives than it is for the defensive team to react, but it's easier to defend than it is to attack. Being aware of where this is taking place and when is a huge aspect of laning phase. Try to view the game through everyone's perspectives and see where the, their goal should be this game. So you can aid or hinder that goal. Uh, so let's break this down. The flow of lanes will di dictate where and when people roam. So if I'm pushed in at four minutes or five minutes and you don't got flash and you're pushed up, hey, I'm mid lane, I'm gonna go to your lane and gank you. Uh, I'm gonna burn ghosts, I'm gonna burn something and, and kill you. Because you're, you're playing too aggressive, you're playing too overextended and I, and I can see that, you don't have wards, you know. Um, that's pretty much like how, like, that could, that's so, so you could like notice when that's gonna happen, you just back up and not die. Uh, understanding this will allow you the initiative to make team calls. So, let's say my bot lane and mid lane are pushed up really hard. Um, bot lane forced, um, blue, blue bot lane forced um, red bot lane to back. Then you and your jungler could do dragon and then back, right? Uh, knowing knowing that, that they're going to be pushed out of lane as a jungler, you could be around bot side. And, and when they back, you do dragon. Call your team over. Uh, it's easier for the aggressive team to assemble and force objectives than it is for the defensive team to re react. By what, I, what I mean by that is, uh, let's say if I want to force mid tower, we're all mid. <laughs> if you didn't know we're going to be mid, or if you're wondering why we backed off from you being pushed on to your tower, then you lose mid lane. It's gone. You, you weren't able to defend it. You, you didn't get in position in time. You didn't have the right words. You didn't react properly, and you lost mid lane for that. Um, but it's easier to defend than it is to attack. So let's say if you're in position, uh, four people could uh, not four, uh, three people could defend four people from pushing a mid tower. Um, typically, usually if the gold's even, that's just how that's how it works. So then, so then you have two lanes pushing, and and it, it works in your favor because you you have the right amount of people in the right place at the right time, and you benefit because that means um, someone else is gaining more XP and more gold than 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 your team than the enemy team. Being aware of where this is taking place and when is a huge aspect of laning phase. So you can really tell just knowing these these answers or knowing having the hindsight to predict where, where things are gonna be or, or take place. Uh, it, it just gives you uh, a better chance at winning the game. Try to view the game through everyone's perspectives and see what their goal should be this game. So when you're loading your screen, you look at all the champions, you see what they have, the summoners. Uh, see, you see a Nivea has ignite. Well, why is a Nivea having ignite? Why does she have TP barrier heal? Because she probably thinks she's gonna kill him, or they're probably planning on something to uh, a, a camp mid or something. I don't know. Or your jungler or, or your enemy jungler. Just look at all every champion and try to think how they want to play their lane or what they want to do this game. Or or how 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 are they gonna win? And if they're on your team, enemy team, and then you 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 just, you just aid or hinder that goal, and that's super important. So let's say. You look at the E, and it's like, uh, why does he have um, Ignite Smite? Well, he's probably gonna fight our our Nidalee or Diana in her jungle, right? Okay, if I know this, and and I and I put words down, where words like right here, uh, and then and then he's going to uh, um, her red or something. I can see that and react in, in response to that, and he's fucked. He doesn't have a uh, defensive summoner. He has he has Ignite. He's behind. Uh, you know, that's 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 um that's that's something that you could you could think of. That's something to think about. Uh, indicators of a winning lane. Most times, you want to shove and catch up faster than your laner. First blood is better on you than it is them. One v one, you win hands down. Easier for you to roam than it is for them. You build full damage. You don't need to get items to make laning easier. If you don't get a kill. Or are ahead in CS by two kills counts as you losing lane because they outscale you. You feel like someone is trying to gank you. 
So these are these are some good indicators of a winning lane. Um, if if a lot of the, a lot of these if, if you fall into a lot of these, then you're probably be in a winning lane. You should probably play as such. And yeah, so now we're in the last part, documenting matchups. So this is the part where you get a pen and paper, a notepad, some Google Docs, and you you track each each matchup that you face. And when you do this, you will uh, not win. You won't just win because you have the answers. You just your your um it will increase your chances of winning, right? It'll, I'll make it so you have to think about, think less about how to play the lane and, and just think more about playing it. That that makes sense. When do you win? So these are things to like to like ask yourselves and 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 document. So we'll take Jace, the defender of tomorrow, versus Lucian, the purifier, and we we we'll ask the question and answer it for each question. When do you win an all-in one v one laning? So these are three separate things. And what I mean by this is, when do I win an all-in? Uh, level one, when all-in Lucian, I can't really. Uh, I can do damage and, and trade, but he can also trade and do damage to me, and maybe I'll trade me if, if, if I play it wrong or he plays it right. But level level five, I could probably all-in him, but even then, around that time, my mana is going to be pretty low, his mana is going to be high, uh, our health bars might be even, my health bar might be low, my, his health bar, it depends. But... Uh, I could 1v1. I could definitely 1v1, and I could definitely lane with him. But level 6, I have, if I haven't backed yet, and he hasn't backed yet, he wins. Uh, he, he just out-damages me. He out, has had better mobility. He has better mana, like mana um, conserve, conservation, better trading, better dueling, better CSing. Yeah, he has, it's, all, it's all for him. But um, the second we get a tier 2 item, or, or I get level 8 around, around that time, I could all-in him. I, I beat him in all-in. Uh, he does, doesn't, doesn't have the damage to keep up with me, and if I have Storm Raiders, he doesn't have the mobility to outrun me. And even if he ults, I can just knock him out of it, CC, and, and I win. Uh, this, is what I, this is what I found out from the times I played Lucian, and I can't just all in him early on. Uh, but around mid-game, or like mid-early game, I destroy him, and if I get that destroy off, I'm going to keep destroying him over and over and over again, 100 to 0 him constantly. That's what typically happens. And I learned this from dying to him when I tried to all in early on, and and I I'll, I'll learn I I'll learn I just just that's how you play the game. You just document it, and then you're you're learning how to play the lane. And the next time you face these lanes, you should be in a better position or an advantageous position. And laning, uh, so basically, if I lose the all in, uh, not lose all in, but say level eight, he has a vampire scepter or a, a cutlass, and I have like. Uh, the armor pin item and two long swords. If if I can't kill him, then he's just gonna life still and I'm gonna have to back because he's gonna out sustain me. But the more items I get compared to his items, the better off I am as long as he's not ahead in gold. Because I could just burst him and 100 to zero him, he can't do anything about it. Because he's in ADC uh, at the end of the day. Do I shove, let shove, or keep lane equal? Typically, I shove against Lucian because he's going to shove against me, and I don't want to be under tower last hitting because he could just keep poking me with his Q for free, and I can't walk up and hit him because he has a minion advantage, and I don't want that. So to minimize his advantage over me, I'm going to try to shove as hard as I can. Uh, and the lane, oh, I want to keep the lane equal because I don't want to get ran down by him in a jungler. So yeah, I want to keep the lane equal. So I'm going to try my hardest to keep the lane equal and poke and such. What items are best to kill slash sustain? So, what Lucian's, they always go Bork first, and I think versus Jace, you probably don't want to go Bork, maybe you go Lethality or uh, Yomu's, uh, mainly because you just won't have the damage, you won't have the raw damage to out damage me, and you just, you can't never win an all-in or 1v1 against me, when, once it gets to that first item point. So, so far, all Lucian's I played, they always go Bork, they never went Yomu's or Lethality item, so I don't, I can't, I don't know. But for me, if I lose if I lose lane, I'm probably gonna get more Dorange blades. I don't know. I haven't really lost except for that one time against Solution to really understand how to get back in the game. I guess once you lose lane or die one Solution, you just lose. Uh, that's how the champion works. Tell it. Um, yeah. What do you buy when ahead or behind? I'm just I just buy lethality. Well, what he should buy when he's behind? 
I don't know. <laughs> it's just over. I guess whoever kills two first just destroys the lane. That's how this game. That's how the lane works. <laughs> Hyper specific interactions you have with your laner's champion and knowing if it's going to decide the engage slash trade. And what I mean by this is, my Q does my my melee stance, my hammer stance Q does damage and slows. So if but Lucian, so so let's say if I if I um. Watch my Q E at him. I get my Storm Raiders. I jump at him, and I and I and I Q with my um, W and powered autos. And I did that W, and then I'm gonna E him and let's hit him a lot, right? And flash ignite on him. If he dashes out of my 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 my, my Q, my hammer chance Q, the damage and slow won't hit him. So and then that means I can't auto him in melee stance, and that means I can't get my W damage off, and I can't get my E damage off. And, and then I'm going to have to run back, and when I'm running back, he's going to shoot me and hit me and, and chase me down like the dog I am. So, if he dashes out of my queue, that's terrible, and I'm going to lose that trade and gauge, and I might just die for it. But, if I stay in melee stance, and I run him down, and I auto him in the melee, sure, I won't get much damage off, but it forces him to, to, to lose that trade. And if he dashes, then I kill him. Because I wait for the dash to happen, and then I, then I jump camera stance on him, and then he has to flash or something. What Knowing what the junglers want to do. So in this lane, what do the junglers want to do? Uh, they probably want to gank me if I'm all inning Lucian. They probably want to gank Lucian if he's all inning me. Um, they might not get Lucian, they might not get me. Uh, it just depends. Uh, how, how, how would junglers look at this lane, right? Or if they see a Trinimer in um, Nasus lane, they're probably like, oh, I want to gank that Trinimer. He's going to be overextending. He's going to be um, running down Nasus early on. If I kill Trinimer like once or twice, Nasus is going to take off. So the jungler might not even be in your lane. You can just play it however you want. But knowing what your jungler wants to do when they see lanes and see your lane is uh, plays into every lane. It's important to understand. What happens to other lanes if I fall behind? So if I fall behind, Lucian's gonna have a fill day. He's gonna just gun down bot lane, gun down top lane, and we lose. What do I do if in other lanes if I get ahead? Uh, typically, I just I just stay mid versus Lucian, and I just keep destroying him over and over and over again until I get tier two tower, and then I start roaming. And by that time, Lucian's so far behind that he will never be relevant um, until he gets his until he, until he gets like three ADC core items. And when can I trade? That's super important too. Uh, when his Q's down. I could trade when he's poking out of minions. I could get an empowered QE on him. That's a good trade for me. Um, it's really hard against Lucian because he's just pokes so well and he punishes so well. So the second you add position, he just hits you. Um, so it's so it's really hard. But early on, I could just well, not early on, but later on, once we get a core item or a tier two items, I could just kill him. It's one, one, straight up zero, one hundred to zero him. And typically, that's that's uh, that's how the lane would go. Uh, so this has been an informative, educational series matchups and how they affect uh, the flow of the game. I'm on YouTube, Nicholas Mana. I'm on Twitch, Nicholas Mana under, underscore Mana. Twitter, same thing. Uh, if you like what you see, if you have any questions, if there's anything I left out, uh, any ideas for the next educational episode. Uh, let me know. And as always, I'm hard stuck plat, so you don't have to. <laughs>